Well, good evening, everybody. 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 Um, I, I can't imagine how many of you are actually viewing this this evening. But I figured that the Internet is probably available to 2 billion people around the world. So I figure there must be like a, a billion people watching. Doesn't that make sense? You know, at least a billion. And of course, if you if I wait for latecomers, I will never get started because a lot of them are stuck in terrible weather and stuff like that. So we'll just begin. But it's great to see uh, great to see you all. Welcome to the uh, southwest corner of my music room. Uh, I won't be able to show you the rest of it, fortunately for me. Uh, but this part looks pretty pretty nice. There's a picture of Les Paul back there. You can't really see it. It's blocked by my music stand. Anyway. Do let me tell you something as we start the show. It's a little something I thought you should know. So I will tell you as we settle into place. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's impossible to sing and play the bass. You're a lovely group of people. You deserve the courtesy of knowing what you can expect of me. I have practiced. But it will not mean a thing, because it's impossible to play the bass and sing, sing, sing. You see, the bass is fretless, it's not like a guitar on bass. You spend your whole life wondering where the hell you are. It's got no little markers, just a fingerboard so bare, and lots of notes which often are not there. Then when you start singing, you've got lyrics on your mind, and the notes on bass become impossible to find. To remember lyrics, melodies, bass lines, and chords is no less a miracle. And lords, ooh, 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 ooh. so as I make a thousand ever sit there and be kind, do not throw tomatoes at me, keep this all in mind. Remember, this is serious, remember, this is art, remember this, or I will fall apart. So as you make a thousand, there is to turn be kind. Do not to demand. Remember this issue. Remember this. I forgot where I was. I played such a long lick. I forgot it. Um, so as you make a thousand, there is sit there and be kind. Do not throw tomatoes at me. Keep this on me. Remember this is. Oh, remember this is something that's wrong. Remember, it's impossible. I'm proving it right now. It's impossible to do. Possible. Do, 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 da, do, do, da, do, 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 to sing and play the bass. Ah. Thank you. No, 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 please. No, please. See, I played a longer than usual uh, bass lick, and I got so tied up in it that I forgot what the lyric was. But that happens. Anyway. Here's a true song, true story. restaurant in Ireland. Lots of jazz musicians in the place. -doo 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 -doo. Dizzy Gillespie wanders in. Everybody knows it's him. Everybody knows his face. Dizzy walks right over to our table. There's lots of folks that he is glad to see. Don't bum 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 bum. Dizzy walks up, says hello to everybody in the restaurant except for me. He doesn't recognize me. He never does. He never has. He thinks that maybe I'm somebody's agent or a dentist who is really into jazz. And I've worked with Diz on numerous occasions. We've played together at Carnegie Hall. But here in front of all these people, I want to impress. I'm the one that Dizzy can't recall. I know he knows a lot of people. His social life is most complex. Every year he sees a million faces. The entire world is on 
his Rolodex do, 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 do. We all take so much pride in knowing Dizzy. Having him know you must feel so fine. How well I know the name John Burks could less be. If only John Burks could remember mine. Boo ba do do da do de do da do do de de do 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 boo ba do do ba da do be do 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 ba 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 de do 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 de de do de do de do de do 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 de do ba 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 do be do ba do ba do ba 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 I myself have met a lot of people whose names I sometimes can't recall. And I can sense their disappointment when I don't remember them at all. They say, come on, Jay, we met in San Francisco. How could you possibly forget? I smile at them meekly. They get angry and upset. But I've worked with Diz on numerous occasions. We've played together on a TV show. But here in front of all these people, I want to impress. Dizzy doesn't say hello. I'm the only guy he doesn't know. Ha, 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 Dizzy doesn't say hello, whoa, whoa, whoa. Anyway, what are you going to do? Um, just a second. I have to make sure the television's turned off on here. Excuse me for a second. I was hearing what I was hearing. I was hearing my wife's speakers, and I thought the television was on. What are you going to do? She's in the she's in the living room watching the show. Can you believe that? Hope she gives me a big tip. I'll try to talk her into it. I thought the television was on, um, but I'm wrong. She's in there watching the show. Anyway, uh, dizzy. Uh, that, that's a true story, of course. And that happened in Ireland. And um, uh, right after that, I went to the airport and, and Benny Carter was in the airport. And Leroy Vinegar came up to me and said, Jay, do you know Benny Carter? He's sitting right over there. And I went, oh, he won't know me, just like Dizzy didn't know me. But I walked over to Benny and he goes, oh, Jay Lenhart, L-E-O-N-H-A-R-T. And he started talking about songs I wrote. Boy, did that make me feel better. So I got to write a song called Me and Benny also. But here's a nun. Here's another one. See, what happened was I got asked to go to Los Angeles to play a convention. So they asked me how much money did I want. I said I wanted $5,000. They said, how's 500 So I lowered my fee to 4000 They thought about it and came back with 500 I made my final offer of 3000 And we finally settled on 500 So then what happened was I went to the airport and they had bought me a first class ticket on TWA. Well, I walked into the plane, sat down in first class. The first thing they do is serve you a mimosa. I sat down and a little white-haired gentleman walked on the plane right behind me, sat down in the first-class seat right next to me. But this wasn't just your ordinary white-haired guy. This is one of the most famous people in the country, in the world, sitting right next to me. True story. Take my seat aboard the plane. And what is this I see? Leonard Bernstein comes aboard and sits right next to me. First class New York to LA, some things just work out right. I'll be sitting next to Leonard Bernstein this 
whole flight. Maybe I should just like act like I do not recognize him, be real cool and do my best not to antagonize him. Now we're rolling down the runway, next stop is L.A. I'm nonchalant like I ride next to Lenny every day. Naturally, I turn to him against my own advice. Introduce myself and find that Lenny's very nice. Soon we start to chat and drink and talk about our lives. We talk about our children and our wives. But what a lovely fellow, what a lucky day. Me and Lenny side by side, New York to L.A. Soon we're chatting, drinking, talking like the very best of pals. Talking music, life, art, death, root canals. Now he's interrupting me, but really that's okay. Cause he's a lovely fellow and he's got a lot to say. I recite some songs I wrote, he recites them back. For poetry and music, he seems to have a knack. He tells me that his new show closed and now he's feeling beat and he's not used to dealing with defeat. But what a lovely fellow, what a lucky day. Me and Lenny side by side, New York to L.A. Ruda do de do do He does the London Times crossword, 10 minutes and he's through. <clears throat> does the puzzle with his pen, I do not have a clue. What an intellectual but a warm and friendly guy. We talk about the world below as we sail through the sky. Finally I feel the airplane starting to descend. And I know this lovely day is coming to an end. Put a trace and seat backs up just like you're supposed to do. Land, bid my friend a fond adieu. But what a lovely fellow, what a lucky day. Me and Lenny side by side, New York to LA. What a lovely fellow, though really I must say. I've not heard from Lenny since I left him in LA. Not a goddamn word from Lenny since I left him in L.A. In L.A. In L.A. In L.A. <sighs> thank you, thank you. <sighs> it's quiet. It's very quiet after that song. Um, send me a, an email of your applause, please. Like clap, 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 clap. Anyway. Um, I'll make up my own applause. That's all right. I'll be, I'll be fine. Wait a minute. Let's see. There's a sign. There's an email coming in. Somebody said. Somebody. Michael. Sits, sounds great. Wherever they are. CV support. Oh, Michael. Concert, concert window support said it sounds great. Well, thank you, Michael. That's very nice of you. Um, it's kind of hard to do this because your computer. I put the the little camera on the computer, and the computer's over there, and I can't really see. But but I'm going to stop if anything yeah, looks interesting. Do that. Do. If you really, really want to cause some problems, if you really, really want to cause some pain, simply go down to your local airport and try to put a base aboard a plane. The trouble starts when you approach the terminal. You won't find a sky cap anywhere. Because once they see the giant case in which you've packed your massive base, they pew, disappear into thin air. Oh. 
So buy yourself new luggage to the terminal. Let out a big sigh of relief. The ticket lady looks at you in horror. She stares at you in disbelief. She says, "You're not going to put that on an airplane. No, 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 no. It's just too large. It's just too big. Too big." So you smile. She doesn't think you're funny. Mm -mm. To her, you're just another sexist pig. She gets pissed off, calls her supervisor, who sees the base and goes into a swoon. And the ticket they decide on for the plane you want to ride on cost you more than a ticket to the moon. Of course, nowadays we must deal with security. They see the base, they start to drool. They want to give the base a colonoscopy. You struggle to be cool. This is not the time for getting angry. This is not the time to cause a scene. This is when you must turn into Gandhi, calm, placid, serene. Better yet, be Obi Wan Kenobi. Use the force to get him into line. Tell him, do not worry about the base. It will be no problem. Let the base pass through. It will be fine. If you really, really want to cause some problems, if you really, really, really want to cause some pain, simply go down to your local airport. And try to put a base aboard it. Try to put a base aboard it. Try to put a base aboard a plane. Ah, ah, ah. While I was singing that, I see somebody who wrote that. Somebody wrote clap, clap, and that made me laugh and smile. Thank you very much. Oh, Al Kutzen, thank you, Al. We, West End Avenue loves you. There you go. I, I'm telling you, Michael. Uh, sounds great and quag. I don't even speak quag either. That's amazing. Uh, but it sounds great in quag. Is that a, that's an Irish? It must be an Irish dialect that my computer's. Oh, quag, quag. I'm sorry. Um, listen, I have a new song that I wrote that I really want to do right now. It's supposed to be way down the list, but I'm afraid I can't wait. I can't wait because it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, what happened was see. Uh, a long time ago, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, an opera singer was doing a concert, a series of concerts of Ellington music. Now, you know, that's going to be hopefully as successful. Anyway, she hired Grady Tate, Ron Carter, and a piano player whose name I don't remember. He probably is watching. Uh, but anyway... They were going to do a series of concerts at all the major uh, symphony halls around. And suddenly I got a call from Grady saying, Jake, could you do, could you do the, the concerts? Uh, Ron's not going to do them. I said, oh, man. Oh, are you kidding me? Of course. So I go to rehearsal, and it turns out, of course, that unfortunately, no one had told the, the diva in question that Ron wouldn't be there and it would be me. And... Well, I didn't figure this out for a long time, why she was so upset. But finally it dawned on me that that's, she didn't really dislike me. It was the fact that I wasn't Ron. So I started working on this little song because she, was, she wasn't she was nice. I mean, even if I wasn't Ron, you don't have to be that nasty about it. And it's, if you're thinking of opera singers who this might be, you, you trust me, you won't get the right one. It's not who you think. Um, so anyway, I, I had to... I spent 10 years writing a little song, thinking about it. 10 years, been toying with this lyric. As a writer of the song, I do possess a forum, wherein I can pillage those who'd treat me with less than decorum. So today I sing my vengeful song of retribution, knowing full well it's not a good solution. My song's about an opera singer who's simply done me wrong. 
She really wasn't nice to me and has earned herself a little song. And thus I sing my little ditty of righteous indignation knowing full well it can't help the situation. I worked for this opera singer several years ago. I was subbing for Ron Carter, I will have you know. Ron had left the gig, I figure, in a fit of pique. And Grady asked me to finish out the week. But no one told the singer, I'll start again. But no one told the singer that Ron had up and quit. So when I walked in, she looked at me and then she threw a royal fit. We started the rehearsal, she was rude and crude and terse and from there things only went from bad to worse. She grimaced and she grumbled, she got nasty as could be. I was not Ron Carter, which apparently she could see. She started running around the room in her black sarong, screaming, no, 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 that's all wrong. She hovered over me with her green eyes glowing, reminding me of Batman with his black cape flowing, telling me how to play the bass while showing off in Italian, you know, Allegretto tutti frutti pasta scallion. Using pompous language that no one understood, finding 50 ways to tell me that I simply was no good nasty and obnoxious, angry, mean, and rude. Hers was not a winning attitude. serene. Madam, w might you tell me in English, please, tell me what you mean. She looked at me ag aghast, no, aghast, and gasped. That could be, it looked at me and gasped, or it looked at me aghast. That's why I was having trouble with that lyric. She looked at me aghast, no further words required. I had just been fired. She expected me to bow and scrape and turn the other cheek to her. While I, the great imposter, should even dare to speak to her. So just like my hero Ron, I got out of there real fast. My first day was my last. So now I close my little song of vengeance and of wrath, knowing that it will not help and it's not the wisest path, but maybe she'll come to understand how I loathe her behavior. As my pen once again becomes my sword and savior, maybe she'll come to understand how I loathe her behavior as my pen is once again my sword and savior. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. Oh, well, that's that. So that's uh, my, the little song called My Sword and Savior, which may possibly never get sung again. Who knows? I worked for Mel Torme for a long time. I worked for him from 1980 through 1990. And then a little bit after that. And uh, had a great time with Mel. He was really fun to work with. And he was a great musician. And we had just, it was musically just a ball. Uh, one, one of the last gigs I played with him was down at uh, Blues Alley in Washington. And we for two weeks. And you had to be there 8 o'clock every night. 
Monday through Sunday. No, Tuesday through Sunday. You had Monday nights off. And the very last night of the gig was a Monday, Sunday night. But I decided that day I would go up to uh, New York. I was playing the brunch at the Blue Nut at the time. And I said, I'll just go up in the morning, play the brunch, and get the plane back in time to play in the evening, which I did. Except when I got back to LaGuardia for the 5 o'clock shuttle back to Washington, the weather was terrible. It's 5 p.m. I'm sitting in an airplane at LaGuardia. The captain says there will be a delay. Oh, no, this isn't good. You see, I've got to be in Washington, D.C. tonight to play for Mel Torme. Out the, window, out the window of the airplane, lightning's crashing, winds are thrashing, skies are dark, and rain is whipping by. Still somehow, three hours from now, I've got to be in Washington, D.C. This plane has got to fly. I did not tell a soul last night about my little New York flight. I knew that I could make it back in time. But now it looks like Mel Torme may play tonight without the bass. And let me tell you, that would be a crime. That would be a crime. I really hate to say it, but I think my luck has finally run out. My warranty has just expired. Because if I am not in Blues Alley tonight at 8 o'clock and playing bass for Mel Torme, I will be fired. You see, I really like this job. We always have a lot of fun and everybody gets along real well. We play a lot of real nice music. I get lots of solos. And now I'm going to blow it all to hell. Say it, but I think my luck has finally run out. My warranty has just expired. Because if I am not in Blues Alley tonight and playing bass or Mel Torme, I will be fired. And then around 6.35, the engines roar. They come alive, and seconds later, we are in the air. I begin to think that I may somehow make this gig tonight. Oh, oh do I even dare? But God, the weather's terrible. We're flying right through thunderstorms, yet the captain just keeps pressing on. Now the airplane's diving, dumping, jiving, jumping, bouncing, bumping. I think I can see the White House lawn. It defies all understanding how we could be really landing, but at 7.30 we touch down. <laughs> Congratulations, Captain. No, I never had the slightest doubt. Now pardon me, I gotta get downtown. I get a taxi right away with absolutely no delay. I tell the taxi driver of my plight. Before we even settle down, he mashes that old pedal down. We fly to town as we make every light. Eight o'clock, we reach Blues Alley. I walk in quite casually, as if I weren't under such duress. I saunter through the restaurant, trying to look nonchalant, but inside I am a total mess. I see the show has not begun. They're waiting for me. Oh, isn't this fun? I don't think I'll survive. So fully prepared to meet my doom, I walk into the dressing room and find out I'm the first one to arrive. With all my worry and my fear, it turns out I'm the first one here. Sometimes life can be sublime. In spite of all the stress and strain I went through on that stinking plane, I'm the only one who's here on time. The only one on time. <laughs> then around 6.35, the others frantically arrive, apologizing all the way. They're rushing around, they're in a panic like musicians on the Titanic. I tell them, Felton, fellas, it's okay. Everyone, including Mel, is rushing around, upset as hell, while me, I am as calm as I could be. Here, I almost blew the gig. I almost screwed up really big. And now, I'm Mr. Punctuality. That's me. I was absolutely certain I would never make this curtain. This gig would be the death of me. I could feel the noose around my neck. I was a total nervous wreck. And now, Mr. Punctuality. It's 5 p.m. I'm sitting in an airplane at LaGuardia. The captain says there will be a delay. 
Oh no, this isn't really good, you see, I've got to be... Oh no, this isn't good, you see, I've got to be in Washington, D.C. To play for Mel Torme. Gotta play for Mel Torme. Gotta play for... Mel Torme. Quag. It's Patty and Quag. That's who it is. It's Patty and Quag. That's right, she lives in Quag. Anyway, um, that's, uh, that's the Mel Torme song. And uh, there's so many. Let's see. Let's see. W-A-O. Jay, enjoying this from Ocean Pine. Sounds good. Oh, my brother. Thanks, John. See you this summer. Build a little tent in the backyard. That's what we'll do. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I wrote this song to myself as I was driving out to Milwaukee. I looked in the rear view mirror at myself and I'd been driving for about 14 hours and I looked horrible. I mean, really tired, depressed, weary. So I wrote myself a song. When you look in the mirror in the morning, I wonder what you see. Cause when I see you in the evening, you don't look so good to me A poor soul all downtrodden And all wrapped up in his own misery I hate to preach to you Cause preaching's kind of rude I hate to preach to you But let me not be misconstrued it's time for you to reach deep down inside yourself and brother change your attitude. Cause misery's your mistress and bad luck seems to be your wedded wife. Misery's your mistress and she's causing you a mess of stress and strife. It's time to change your attitude. And bring a little joy into your life. Seems to be your wedded wife. Zooey Bobby do. Zooey Bobby. Misery's your mistress, and she's causing you a mess of stress and strife. Do do do. Time to bring a little joy. Bring a little joy into your life. Time to change your attitude and bring a little joy into your life. Do do. Bring a little joy into your life. I think you can do that. I think you can bring joy into your life if you want to. I just, I just, I just believe it. I just believe it.
I have a song here, which I, I'm going to take the words out, so maybe I won't forget them. Uh, but it was a song I wrote when I... I love cowboy and western songs, especially the newer ones that just make use of the craziest metaphors in the world. I thought, man, I can write a song full of metaphors. I write a love song that's just so heavy in metaphors that it, it, it'll wipe everything, every cowboy song out. So here's my attempt at my cowboy metaphor song. You say you got her number You say you are so smart Well don't say I did not warn your friend Cause she's gonna break your heart You say that I don't scare you You're as brave as you can be You say that I don't scare you As brave as you can be I was right you say that I don't scare you, you're as brave as you can be. Oh well, she'll have you howling like a dog in the kennel, just you wait and see. Didn't do better, cause she's mean, she's mean. She's a genuine, bona fide heartbreak machine. Is that ba do ba do 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 your heart just loves to wander. Your heart just loves to wander. Your heart just loves to roam. Well, just like General Custer and his boys, you're going to wish that you never left home. You say that this don't bother you. You wonder why the fuss. Well, you're gonna feel like a poor little beagle run over by a greyhound bus because she's mean. She's mean. She's a genuine, bona fide heartbreak machine. Death sit you down. Once she sets you in her sights, there won't be no way to distract her. You're gonna feel like a squirrel neath a big steamroller or a mouse in a trash compactor. Like a piranha in a fish tank, she's gonna chew you right apart. Just like a possum neath an 18 wheeler, she's gonna crush your heart because she's mean. Heartbreak machine. You're gonna end up hurting. It's written in the plot. You're gonna feel like a watermelon drop from a helicopter down into a parking lot. gonna end up hurting and I'm very sorry about that but just like a bug on the windshield of love your heart is a gonna go splat mean mean genuine bona fide heartbreak machine mean Genuine bona fide heartbreak machine. Do -do 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 -do. She's a genuine bona fide heartbreak machine. Do 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 do. Well. Oh, I like that song. I like that song. I like it. Well, I had a list of songs I was going to do, and. Uh, uh, oh, here's one. Here's one I like. This song got written as a result of... I used to travel a lot. And f one time flying home, a long time ago, I looked at the 
customs forms they had made you sign and all the things you weren't supposed to bring back in the country. And I got to thinking, what if a person brought them all back, brought everything back? Just everything. Here I am in customs, inexplicably detained, and from getting angry, I will have to be refrained. Yes, I've read the regulations. What could the problem be? Why, oh, why are you detaining me? Okay, perhaps I did pick up a couple of things abroad, but this kind of harassment really ought to be outlawed. You're making such a big deal over minuscule details. So much fuss about a box of snails. Yes, I have been in Nairobi raising sheep and cattle. Yes, I read the regulations, all that pointless prattle, but so much fuss and bother about a bag of soil. Frankly, you are making my blood boil. I've got two alligators from the hot Brazilian swamps. A testy little chimpanzee that screeches, bites, and stomps. An otter from the Maldives, a goat from Kathmandu, a cockroach from a hut in Timbuktu. A little baby llama from the mountains of Tibet. Six or seven ostrich eggs that have not hatched quite yet. Mosquitoes from Botswana, a parrot from Peru. And you won't let me through. You confiscate my passport. Now that is such a drag. Just because you found a couple earthworms in my bag. I've read the regulations. What could the problem be? Why, oh, why are you detaining me? all upset I do not understand. This is just a Paraguayan pigeon perching on my hand. These are just some monkey droppings I found in Zaire. And now you won't come near. You want to check my briefcase? Go ahead now please. What are those? Nothing. Persian bugs and fleas. A little Irish whiskey. Some camembert from France. Turtles killer bees. Fire ants. I bring back some souvenirs and you all get so frantic. Like maybe I should toss them all right into the Atlantic. I've read the regulations. What could the problem be? Why, oh, why are you detaining me? Why, oh, why are you detaining me? Why, oh, why are you detaining me? Dot, dot, dot. I see some more comments. I'm going to come closer to the computer and see what it says. It said, fabulous. Round six optimized. Fabulous. You see that? And I see I've got, it really says 13 viewers, but I'm going to imagine it means 13 million viewers because the, the internet is very big. Thanks, folks. I appreciate it. It's great. West End Day, West End. <laughs> Who, who's on our West End? Sheru AOL. I don't know who, it, who that would be. Somebody I know. I know it. Anyway, um, that's that. Now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. I had it all planned out so beautifully. I know what I want to do. I haven't done this in a long time. This got written as a result of my... Uh, thinking about the bass and where it came from and how did music get started. And, I mean, how did they play music back in, like, in the Middle Ages? Well, we know how they did that, but if they didn't have instruments, I, uh, I imagined some man sitting in a forest, pounding on a log, beating out music, and people 
they didn't want to have much else to do. They came and they sat around and listened. So he started pounding on the log and, and telling stories about their life and times, sort of like I do now. And so I imagine what a song that he might try to write uh, and sing for the people way back there. Life in the Middle Ages is just outrageous. Life in 1383, it's as bad as life could be in the Middle Ages. Life in the Middle Ages, lousy work, rotten wages. Ah, we till the soil all day. Hmm. Never time for play in the Middle Ages. In my little, in my little village, we try hard not to think. In my little village, all we do is work and drink. Toil the soil and pass the wine. Get drunk and everything's just fine. In the Middle Ages. Fine. In the Middle Ages. Life in the Middle Ages. A man must be courageous. Now we're off to the Crusades. Pillage villages and maids. In the Middle Ages. The king rides into battle and I must hold his sword. Do not worry, I will be right here with you, my lord. He wears all the armor, I'm the one who will be gored. But at least I won't be bored. In the Middle Ages. Life in the Middle Ages. Oh, the plague is so contagious. Where did I get this nasty cough? <coughs> Why is my right foot falling off? In the Middle Ages. Ah, the Middle Ages, such a peculiar fate. Ooh, da, ba, ba. It's amazing, anyone lives long enough to mate. Till the soil and pass the wine. Wine, wine, get drunk and everything's just fine. Ooh, in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages. Ooh. Oh, it's a touching piece. It is. I like it when I think about it. We'll take this here. Well, I see by the clock on the wall that I've gone 48 minutes, and they say you should do 50. They say 50 is plenty. So, we're going to do 50. We're going to do one more song. And it's about, it's a song I haven't done in a while. It's one of my faves. And it happens to be a, a great story attached to it. I used to work for the singer Louis Belson. The singer for the drummer Louis Belson. I'm going to sing Louis Belson. I used to work for the drummer Louis Belson. And he was one of the sweetest people and finest musicians you ever played with in your life, you ever met in your life. Great drummer, played with Ellington, had his own big bands, and I had the pleasure of working with him for almost 20 years, on and off. And uh, one night we had a we had a party to play. Now Louis is a jazz band; it's not like uh, it's not a society band. We had a party to play, and we didn't know, but it was at the Pierre Hotel in New York. Now the Pierre Hotel is not a jazz club; it is a high society hotel. We walked into the ballroom and read it. immediately we realized we were in the wrong place. But being professionals, we went through the book and we got everything we could to play like a foxtrot so people could dance. I mean, we took out all the crazy numbers and all the goofy numbers and played everything. Don't do that. You know, well, still, and people liked it, but one guy hated it because he knew something was wrong. He thought we were, this was terrible. So I'm standing right next to Louis. I watched him, Louis. This guy keeps coming up to the stand, talking to Louis. Louis's playing the drums right here, see? 
and I'm watching this and, and he's complaining to Louis and Louis just the sweetest guy chewing gum and playing the cymbals not worrying about it finally the guy finally Louis gets so aggravated that he strikes back the only way he knew how and that's when I decided I had to write a song about it and that's what I did and here it is <laughs> See the people dancing It's Louis Belson's band up on the stage Music great for dancing Singing and romancing And tonight the foxtrot is the rage But suddenly a grouchy man with silver hair Comes to the stand Fires off a warning cannon He says he's a big contributor to this He says he's a big contributor to this affair and he wants us to play like Lester Lennon. This guy don't know from Louis Belson, and he could care less. And he proceeds to make this solemn vow. He knows what we're being paid, and all of it will be mislaid. Unless we play some Lester Lennon now. Play some Lester Lennon now. These kind of dances, the people take no chances. It's it's Lester Lennon music all the way. They don't think it's funny when they've paid a lot of money to have to swing when they would rather sway. You see, Lester Lennon's music is country clubs, yellow pants, ties with ducks, loafers with no socks. Louis Belson's music is for jazz freaks, bums, and beatniks. Louis Belson's music is the pox. Lester Lennon's music is Oldsmobiles, riding lessons, strings of pearls, patent leather pumps. Louis Belson's music is chewing gum and Seagram seven years. The kind of music that you find in dumps, you find in dumps. Some real dance music screams the man with silver hair. He is so bugged that he could snap. He says, I don't care who I don't care how you better play my music now because I cannot dance a foxtrot to this crap. He walks away, returns, smolders, burns, finally says, hey, listen to me, Louis Belson. Heads are gonna roll around here unless you play my music. Time to understand me well, son. So Louis nods and then proceeds to play a long drum solo, loud and long, just like he was deranged. I guess he figured if the man had paid to be unhappy, well, he should not be shortchanged. He should not be shortchanged. comes back but Louis stops him in his track Louis says finally hey hey better listen to me well son Louis says I'm sorry you are so upset it fills me up with deep regret I'm sorry you're so discontent about the money you have spent I'm sorry you blew all your loot but listen to me you old coot tonight you're gonna dance to Louis Belson that's L-O-U-I-E-B-E-L-L son Tonight you're gonna dance to Louis. Boom chicka boom chicka chicka on chipom. Biddle boom biddle boom biddle boom boom. Chicka to pocket chip pocket chip boom. Belson. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, folks. It's been a lot of fun. You'll pardon my errors, but uh, this is what happens when you're looking at a, a little television screen instead of people looking at you. Because, uh, <laughs> anyway. It's been a lot of fun. I'm going to do it again and again and again because it's great practice for me to go through my own music and write new stuff and things. So I will see you all later. Thank you for tuning in and hope to see each and one of you very soon. Bye-bye. Adios.